president on his way to Asia trying to deflect this week's revelations in the Russia investigation, calling on the Justice Department yet again to investigate Hillary Clinton. I want to bring in now CNN political commentator Keith Boykin, political contributor Ed Martin, political commentator Simone Sanders, a former press secretary for Bernie Sanders, and Republican strategist Rick Wilson. Hello, welcome to the show. Let's see. Rick, I'll start with you. Uh, it, it was just Monday morning that Robert Mueller announced indictments against Paul Manafort and Rick Gates. A surprise guilty plea from a former Trump campaign ad uh, advisor, uh, George Papadopoulos, who admitted to lying about having contact uh, with Russians during the campaign. Mueller's also set to question Trump's former bodyguard, Keith Schiller, longtime aide Hope Hicks. How bad of a week do you think this was for the president? Well, here's the, here's the thing that I find most amusing is there were a lot of people who are on the Trump side of the fence who really thought Hillary Clinton or Podesta were going to be indicted this week. And the fact of the matter is Mueller just laid out one card. He's got a whole handful, and, and frankly, he's probably got a royal flush in here. And these guys have had a, t a catastrophic week, and the ones that don't understand that they've had a ca catastrophic week are just too dumb to, to, to figure it out yet. <laughs> This has been extraordinarily bad for this president, and, and the fact that he's, he's going to Asia for a week is, is a nice escape valve for him, but I don't think it stops the grinding process here. And, and Trump's going to be very nervous, uh, especially about Hope and about Schiller. Yeah. Uh, Ed, I'm, Don, look, I'm looking at well, you. Well, Don, I mean, like, look, I, Rick, has, Rick has been locked into a mode for a year and a half. I mean, this is one of the best weeks. When they look back on this week, you're going to tell, we're going to talk, Don, about how this is the week the Democrats lost the 2018 election. The exposure of the cheating by uh, Hillary Clinton at the DNC makes it clear mm. you can't trust the Democrats. And then, Ed, by the way, Ed, Ed, that wait, wait, be wait, like wait. a fart in a what? hurricane. Wait, wait. Hold on. Listen, well, no, listen, let me, let me finish. Listen, let me finish. It's a very simple, it's a very simple question. Question. Who do you trust, oh. Democrats or Republicans? Not Donald but listen, Trump. Wait, but wait a second. Wait a second. Don, you asked me a question. This president this week confirmed five judges, conservative right-wing judges that Rick Wilson says he likes, all these people. He confirmed five this week. The announcement today was the best jobs report that anybody could see coming. Lo unemployment's down. You guys are missing a great presidency <laughs> you're because you're yelling Russia, Russia, Russia You're Russia juggling a lot again. there. You're juggling a oh, lot. It's, all, it's a great love, week. God it's love, a great it was God about love, the yeah. Russian investigation. Yeah. But, I mean, to his point, I oh, mean, if you, <laughs> you said it was. A, you asked about the week. It's a great week for Trump. Yeah, okay. So <laughs> <laughs> it's a great week. Sorry. It's not been a great week for Donald Trump. A, and no amount of spin in the world no can manufacture that. No I agree that the jobs numbers are the job numbers are up, that the NASDAQ five judges. Is now, everything's up. Five, you know, five uh, judges. I'm not here for those I'm I am not here for those right wing judges because I really do care about criminal justice reform. But what I will <laughs> tell you is you can talk about the job numbers, but that builds on the enormous success of the Obama presidency. Uh. But you cannot ignore that Donald Trump Trump is having a rough week. He has no major legislative accomplishments. Uh, the Republicans are fighting on the Hill about what to do about tax reform. Folks are still talking about repealing and replacing Obamacare. And this White House is, is yelling, oh, no one has anything to do with collusion or Russia. And everybody who's ever been on the Trump payroll, it seems like, is being paraded in front of this um, special counsel. So this is definitely a problematic week for this White House. Keith? You, you know how you know it's a bad week? <laughs> Donald Trump is on Twitter. He's attacking his own attorney general. He's attacking the Justice Department. <laughs> he's attacking the FBI. He does, all, he does that he, all the time. He's, he's attacking he does it all the time. He's attacking the FBI. He's attacking a U.S. military judge. He's attacking Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama. And he, he recycled the old attack against Pocahontas, Elizabeth Warren. This right. guy is he's, he, he's on a tirade on Twitter today because he really is literally understanding that his presidency is disintegrating before his own eyes. Bob Corker, who's already been a critic on the Republican side for the past few weeks, came out today and said this is totally inappropriate. At what point will Republicans start to realize that just calling something totally inappropriate is not Bob, enough? Bob, you have to Bob. take action. And just one little comment about those jobs numbers. The jobs numbers are actually down from where they were last year. We had more jobs created in the first Bob. 10 months of 2016 than in 2017. <laughs> Point. Bob, All right, Bob stay Clark, with me, Bob. everyone. You'll get your point on the other side. When we come back, Hillary Clinton is putting herself in the spotlight again, but is she playing into Trump's hands, giving him a target? President Trump is using the person he considers public enemy number one, a.k.a. Hillary Clinton, to try to steer the American people away from the deepening Russia investigation. But will it work? Back now with my panel. Simone Sanders, you first. There has been a lot of talk about the revelations in Donna Brazile's book where she writes that the DNC and the Clinton campaign had, uh, had entered into a fundraising agreement 
that gave the Clinton campaign a great amount of control over the, the party because she had locked up the nomination. But today, via a memo obtained by CNN, we learned that the agreement was meant only for the general election, not the primaries, and that both campaigns had signed the same agreements. We discussed that last night. Both campaigns had signed the same agreements. So what happened here, Simone? Well, one I'll note, both campaigns did sign a joint fundraising agreement uh, with the Democratic National Committee. The difference between the agreement we signed and the agreement everyone uh, has now seen at this point details some language about uh, staffing, oversight, oversight on fundraising and some research stuff. And all of these things were signed into and codified into, if you will, contract in September of 2015. So what I'll say on this is, look, whether it was Hillary Clinton, Papa Smurf, Boo Boo the Cat or whoever, that particular agreement with those extra addendums that the DNC entered into was improper. It, it, it so yes or no, was it rigged? Credibility. Well, n look, yes. did, some, did somebody have their thumb on the scale, the DNC, for Secretary Clinton's campaign? Yes. But yeah. were the primaries themselves rigged? No, okay. because if you know anything about the Democratic primary process, that's not how it works. Rick, I want to hear from you, but let me play Elizabeth Warren because she left no doubt about what she thinks. Let's watch. Let's watch. Very quickly, Senator, do you agree with the notion that it was rigged? Yes. All right. Was it, was it rigged or was it just Hillary being Hillary? Ed? Oh, uh, look, I, I think you're asking me or Rick? Sorry. Oh, Rick, sorry. Go ahead, Rick. Sorry, yes, sorry, sir. Rick. Uh, look, this is, this is classic Clinton. She's methodical. She's plotting. She's an apparatchik. Um, and, and of course they were going to do this. Of course they were going to go and make these arrangements for fundraising. It, it, you know, both parties make these arrangements with, the, with yeah. candidates in the general. Um, both parties do these kind of uh, these kind of operations. It's not really surprising. I, I didn't find the Brazil revelations all that shocking or disturbing. It's just sort of like, eh, you know. Uh, uh, but obviously, these scandals that are building up, they're going to lead to the impeachment of President Clinton any time now, <laughs> because obviously, yeah. that's all the all that all that Donald Trump can think about is is how Hillary's just ruining this country as president. And, Rick, and it's time for Robert Mueller to really go after the real criminal here, which is Hillary Clinton. <laughs> hey, Rick, I mean, you, two things. Uh, I had the same. When I heard the thing, I was like, eh, well, didn't we go through this through the campaign? Because Bernie Sanders right. and his tennis folks said all the time that it was rigged. And, and some of the stuff was pointed out. The other thing is apparatchik is one of my favorite words, and you use that. So you get, <laughs> I'm going to send you a bottle of wine. Ed, I want to hey, hear what... Hey, yeah. <laughs> hey, Don, hey, Don, hey, Don, no, I want to say something more broadly. I think maybe Rick will agree with this. Both parties have been in what I would say is corrupt. I mean, what we've seen is a look under the DNC's hood, both with the emails and now with this book. Both parties are used as fundraising and really, I would call them money laundering entities. I was in the RNC from 2013 to 2015, and I kept saying the same consultants are making millions mm -hmm. of dollars to do things like data and media buys, and they're putting their thumb on the scale for a system that favored Jeb and Marco and all. Now, Donald Trump blew that up. It was extraordinary, and Bernie Sanders almost did. But I think the lesson here is that when the American people, both parties, remember, Sanders got millions of votes, and Trump got millions and millions of votes. They look at the party system, and they say they're both corrupt, and the people are right. And and I think you're going to see the Democrats have to face it sooner, but the Republican Party is not exempt. Trump does not have control of the sort of uh, consulting class that makes money by laundering uh, money through these uh, parties, and it's a huge problem. Uh, Clinton kept a very low profile in the immediate aftermath of the election. These days, she is much more visible now. Here she is on The Daily Show criticizing President Trump's leadership style. Watch this. You know, of course he can have his own point of view. and and push his policies. That goes with the job. Right. But not to continue to divide Americans against each other. So he just doesn't have any empathy. And you can disagree with somebody over all kinds of partisan issues, but you want to have a president who can try to put himself into the shoes, the feelings of somebody else. And right. he has uh, not been able to do that. And this question is by no means a criticism. Hillary Clinton is a private citizen. She's an American citizen. She's free to go on TV and speak as much as she wants. But do you think that she is giving President Trump and Republicans the ammunition they need to distract, to point away <laughs> from Russia? Because, because the polls will show that people dislike Hillary Clinton, Republicans, 
more than they like Donald Trump. Yeah, well, and they, he knows that. Well, Donald oh. Trump is going to attack mm -hmm. attack Hillary Clinton regardless of whether she has a book tour or whether she says something or doesn't something does doesn't say something. Remember when the Harvey Weinstein story broke? Everybody was saying, "How come Hillary Clinton didn't speak up immediately in the first 72 hours?" Well, now as soon as Hillary Clinton does say something, they say, "Well, why is Hillary Clinton speaking?" You can't have it both ways. Mm -hmm. You can't just say yeah. that she. But, the election, look, the election was 360 days ago, and Donald Trump is still relitigating that election from. 2016. Oh my gosh, is that Yeah, but it's, that it's, high, it's, high, it's high humor for Hillary Clinton to talk about people with empathy. If there's one thing the American people know, she has no feeling for people. People don't okay. relate to her. Okay, wait, So, I mean, hold it's on. just, it's, it's, it's exactly. totally, well, that's well, that's well, totally well, obvious. Let's, hold on a second. Let's let me say something. Let me say something. Totally obvious. She, she's, she's the totally one, obvious. She's the one who helped to help to get the children's health insurance bill. Oh, give me program a break. She's, somebody who doesn't have any empathy or concern for people wouldn't do that. And don't just go call somebody crooked because Donald Trump says it. You some original no, I'm saying it. I'm just saying it. Guys. Trump says. She's a loser. I that's think that's how 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 the fact of the matter is Hillary Clinton she lost. was the That's first the woman. Be quiet. She got three no, no, no. Votes. Hillary Clinton, okay, the fact of the matter right, is right, Hillary Clinton was the first woman to be the major um, to be the the candidate for a major presidential party. Rigged. It was that a rigged primary. She rigged it. it. That cheated. I'm sorry, I work there. You're going to literally sit here and tell me about what I experienced? I am literally telling you, one, Hillary Clinton has not uh, has the right to be in this space. We're not going to tell her to shut up. We're not going to tell Bernie Sanders to I shut up. I didn't tell her to and shut two, up. I, I, too, the, it wasn't rigged. Did people have their hands and maybe their whole foot on the scale? Yes, but knowing that I worked there, our campaign made calculated decisions that resulted in us not being victorious. You mean Bernie Sanders. Was the, were, yes, Bernie Sanders' campaign, made our, our campaign, we made calculated decisions that resulted in us not being victorious. Now, did, were the things happening at the DNC that contributed to us not being victorious? Yes, but were they the main factor? No. And I do not want to continue to relitigate the 2016 election, but I think it's really important that as we move forward, we preserve the integrity of our process uh, yeah. and restore the integrity of the Democratic Party. Okay. But well, I'm not okay. about to let y'all just question. run the I tables. I oh, agree Rick. with I got Elizabeth Warren. Rick, whoa, 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 wait, uh, Rick, I have to say it's interesting to hear Democrats say, yeah, they think that there's, things need to be changed, that the, their thumb was on the scale, but in by, no, by no means uh, did it cause Bernie Sanders to lose uh, the nomination. You don't hear Republicans saying the same thing about the Russia, Russia meddling in our election. Uh, they just keep saying it's fake. There's a difference there, isn't it? Nuance. Well, look, the, 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 the folks around Trump have built this entire artifice up, and they, 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 their entire argument rests on the dossier is fake, all the investigations are fake, all the intelligence agencies are lying, Russia never did anything, they're perfectly nice people, Vladimir Putin's a swell guy, and Donald Trump is, is the only one telling the truth in this entire process. And the, as you can already see, that artifice is falling apart. That edifice is cracking. There is nothing that is going to sustain them through this except a, you know, the, the pretend fantasy bubble, the hermetic bubble around Donald Trump's supporters yeah. where they think everything is false. They're going to find piles of evidence. Bob Mueller's got, got a mountain of evidence about Donald Trump and Russia and about the campaign in Russia and about Russia's attempts to, to, to manipulate the run. election. This is not going to go well for them. Thank you. Is CNN breaking news. We have some breaking news for you. President Trump speaking out tonight talking about Hillary Clinton. Uh, back with you now, Evan McMullen, Van Jones, Mike Shields, and Susan Hennessy. Okay, so welcome back, everyone. Susan, the president was just asked in an interview tonight about why the Justice Department isn't going after Hillary Clinton. Here's how he responded. The saddest thing is that because I'm the President of the United States, I am not supposed to be involved with the Justice Department. I'm not supposed to be involved with uh, the FBI. I'm not supposed to be doing the kind of things that I would love to be doing. And I'm very frustrated by it. So very frustrated by it. What does that statement say to you, Susan? It says that the, the president of the United States is saddened and frustrated by sort of a commitment to the fundamental rule of law. Um, an independent Justice Department, independent law enforcement, that actually is a hallmark of U.S. democracy. Um, it's an unbelievably important tradition that has been respected by presidents of both parties. Um, and so these are, these are sort of statements that are both, uh, they're both stunning and yet not at all surprising. I mean, really just uh, shocking to hear this kind of uh, uh, attitude and approach really to fundamental 
fundamental rule of law issues from a president. But at the same time, we've seen Trump not only say things like this in the past, but actually act as though he doesn't care about an, an independent FBI, uh, making statements about, uh, you know, that, the, that his political opponents should be investigated, um, calling for individuals to, to receive the death penalty before they've actually gone through the criminal justice system. Um, so, so once again, uh, sort of his, his instinct and, and really hostility to this notion of, of an independent, apolitical law enforcement is on full display again. And minutes after he just said that, you know, he, he, he's frustrated that he can't get involved, right? Um, he, in that What's same that? interview, he tweeted this. He said, Donald Brazil just uh, stated the DNC rigged the system to illegally steal the primary from Bernie Sanders, bought and paid for by Crooked H. This is real collusion and dishonesty, major violation of campaign finance laws and money laundering. Where is our Justice Department? So, Van, what do you make of that? The president is calling on the Justice Department to go after a political rival, not to mention it came just minutes, as I said, after he just said he can't get involved. Well, that's the sort of you know, stuff that you kind of expect from Trump in that you, you know, consistency is not exactly his middle name. Uh, but you know, I see this somewhat differently. Um, the, the first statement that he made uh, in some ways could be read as a recognition that he does have some limits to his power, which is unusual um, for him to say. So I, I agree. It shows a, a frustration, a chafing at the bit, uh, which I, I agree with, the, with your earlier comment. But it also shows he recognizes there is a bit there. So that's something good that I think, you know, you could take away from it if you, if you wanted to. But him trying to sick as if, if best he can, um, you know, it, it kind of goes back to the whole locker up thing. You know, we, we've had this obsession uh, that Trump has had with Hillary Clinton's uh, criminality, which I can't help but at some point believe could be projection. I mean, if everything he says about her is how criminal she is, I sometimes w wonder if he doesn't have a case of psychological projection. We will see as, as these investigations go forward. Mike, the president also did another interview with Fox tonight where he was asked about uh, filling empty positions in the State Department. Here's how he responded. We don't need all the people that they want. You know, don't forget. I'm a business person, and I tell my people, well, you don't need to fill slots, don't fill them. But we have some people that I'm not happy with their But Assistant process. Secretary of State, you're not getting rid of All that right, position. But let me tell you, the one that matters is me. I'm the only one that matters, because when it comes to it, that's what the policy is going to be. You've seen that. You've seen it strongly. I'm the only one that matters. Is that what you want to hear from your president? Well, first of all, can I just go back to something Vance said, where I, I completely agree with him. I'm sort of shaking my head. People, critics of the president get really frustrated with him when he talks about how he's going to sort of be this authoritarian figure and he's going to just ignore the rule of law. And here he was actually saying factually, I can't get involved with the Justice Department. I ran a campaign where my supporters were saying lock her up every day. And I'm telling all of you guys, I can't do that. So don't expect me to do that. And, but he's still going to be criticized for that. So I, I, I do kind of see but that a, a little. He's saying he's frustrated and sad. Well, well, yeah. What, what, he's expressing his opinion that he's watching someone that he thinks has broken the law, but he can't do anything about it. There is, you know, you have Bill Clinton getting speeches from Russians. You have the Secretary of State's foundation getting money. And you also see, you know, uh, uh, the uranium deal going through while she's Secretary of State. So you're watching things that I'm pretty yeah, frustrated no, no. by it too. Yeah, that she's not being held accountable. Really Mike, not only did you dodge the question, then you held out a shiny object that has been disproven no, I'll, I'll over and over and over again about about uranium. And you shouldn't bring up talking points or conspiracy theories that have not been proven and that have just been it, that have been debunked. It is. You don't do you do yourself and the candidate and the viewing public a disservice. Uh, Don, do I would that. love to have a whole conversation uh, we about could, Cepheus and, we could. and I, the I hearings can read that you didn't every fact check. But I'll I can talk, talk to you about the state. Hang department. on, hang on. I can read you every fact check. I can talk to you about Cephas. I can talk to you about the nine different departments in the government that had to sign off. I can talk to you about Hillary Clinton not being involved. I can talk to you about the person who supposedly had ownership in Uranium One that had sold it even before the deal went through. But none of that matters because that's not what we're talking about. Evan, can you please answer the question that I gave to, <laughs> to Mike before? <laughs> I love no, well, we, we're, we're so far past that, Don. I'm sorry. I, I, I want to talk to you. Wanna... The president saying that he's the only one that matters. Do you want to hear that from your president? Yeah. Well, okay. Let, let me just say, first of all, that that tape that you just played is Donald Trump confessing of his authoritarian tendencies. That bit in his mouth, that is put there by the system. He didn't welcome that into his mouth. That was put by there by the system. That's not him restraining himself, respecting our system. That's the system checking him, and that's a good thing. So with regard to that, no, it isn't all about Donald Trump. We have a system. There are many leaders in our system. He's the most important, uh, but there are many leaders, many sources of power. They all have their authorities according to the Constitution. It's not all about him. 
I believe that he does want to keep elements of other elements of the executive branch like the State Department weak so that he has more power within the executive branch. I, I do think that's that's a, a purpose of his. Uh, but it's it's all wrong. We have our power divided across the government. We need experts. We need people to carry out policy to execute uh, activities in our interests. And it can't all be done by the president and his loyal family members. All right. That's all we have time for. We have some breaking news for you. President Trump speaking out tonight talking about Hillary Clinton. Uh, back with you now, Evan McMullen, Van Jones, Mike Shields, and Susan Hennessy. Okay, so welcome back, everyone. Susan, the president was just asked in an interview tonight about why the Justice Department isn't going after Hillary Clinton. Here's how he responded. The saddest thing is that because I'm the president of the United States, I am not supposed to be involved with the Justice Department. I'm not supposed to be involved with uh, the FBI. I'm not supposed to be doing the kind of things that I would love to be doing. And I'm very frustrated by it. So very frustrated by it. What does that statement say to you, Susan? It says that the, the president of the United States is saddened and frustrated by sort of a commitment to the fundamental rule of law. Um, an independent Justice Department, independent law enforcement, that actually is a hallmark of U.S. democracy. Um, it's an unbelievably important tradition that has been respected by presidents of both parties. Um, and so these are, these are sort of statements that are both, uh, they're both stunning and yet not at all surprising. I mean, really just uh, shocking to hear this kind of uh, uh, attitude and approach really to fundamental rule of law issues from a president. But at the same time, we've seen Trump not only say things like this in the past, but actually act as though he doesn't care about an, an independent FBI, uh, making statements about, uh, you know, that, the, that his political opponents should be investigated, um, calling for individuals to, to receive the death penalty before they've actually gone through the criminal justice system. Um, so, so once again, uh, sort of his, his instinct and, and really hostility to this notion of, of an independent, apolitical law enforcement is on full display again. And minutes after he just said that, you know, he, he, he's frustrated that he can't get involved, right? Um, he, in that but same Donald, interview, he tweeted this. He said, Donald Brazil just uh, stated the DNC rigged the system to illegally steal the primary from Bernie Sanders, bought and paid for by Crooked H. This is real collusion and dishonesty, major violation of campaign finance laws and money laundering. Where is our Justice Department? So, Van, what do you make of that? The president is calling on the Justice Department to go after a political rival, not to mention it came just minutes, as I said, after he just said he can't get involved. Well, that's the sort of you know stuff that you kind of expect from Trump, and that you, you know consistency is not exactly his middle name. Uh, but you know, I see this somewhat differently. Um, the the first statement that he made, uh, in some ways, could be read as a recognition that he does have some limits to his power, which is unusual um, for him to say. So I, I agree, it shows a, a frustration, a chafing at the bit, uh, which I, I agree with the, with the earlier comment. But it also shows he recognizes there is a bit there. So that's something good. That I think you know you could take away from it if you, if you wanted to, but him trying to sick if, if, as best he can, um, you know it, it kind of goes back to the whole locker up thing. You know we, we've had this obsession uh, that Trump has had with Hillary Clinton's uh, criminality, which I can't help but at some point believe could be projection. I mean, if everything he says about her is how criminal she is, I sometimes w wonder if he doesn't have a case of psychological projection. We will see as, as these investigations go forward. Mike, the president also did another interview with Fox tonight where he was asked about uh, filling empty positions in the State Department. Here's how he responded. We don't need all the people that they want. You know, don't forget, I'm a business person. And I tell my people, well, you don't need to fill slots. Don't fill them. But we have some people that I'm not happy with their But Assistant process. Secretary of State, you're not getting rid all of that right. position. All right, but let me tell you, the one that matters is me. I'm the only one that matters because when it comes to it, that's what the policy is going to be. You've seen that. You've seen it strongly. I'm the only one that matters. Is that what you want to hear from your president? Well, first of all, can I just go back to something Vance said where I, I, I completely agree with him. I'm sort of shaking my head. People, critics of the president get really frustrated with him when he talks about how he's going to sort of be this authoritarian figure and he's going to just ignore the rule of law. And here he was actually saying factually, I can't get involved with the Justice Department. I ran a campaign where my supporters were saying lock her up every day. And I'm telling all of you guys, I can't do that. So don't expect me to do that. And, but he's still going to be criticized for that. So I, I, I do kind of see but that a, a little. He's saying he's frustrated and saddened. Well, right. yeah. What, what, he's expressing his opinion that he's watching someone that he thinks has broken the law, but he can't do anything about it. There is, you know, you have Bill Clinton getting speeches from Russians. You have the Secretary of State's Foundation getting money. And you also see, you know, 
uh, uh, the uranium deal going through while she's Secretary of State. So you're watching things that I'm pretty yeah, frustrated no, no. by it too. Yeah, that she's not being held really accountable. Really Mike, not only did you dodge the question, further. and you held out a shiny object that has been disproven no, I'll, I'll over and over and over again about about uranium, and you shouldn't bring up talking points or conspiracy theories that have not been proven and that have just been that have been debunked. It is. You don't do you do yourself and the candidate and the viewing public a disservice. Uh, Don, do I would that. love to have a whole conversation we about Cepheus and, we could. and I, the I can read you every fact check. But I'll I can talk, talk to you about the state. Hang department. on, hang on. I can read you every fact check. I can talk to you about Cephas. I can talk to you about the nine different departments in the government that had to sign off. I can talk to you about Hillary Clinton not being involved. I can talk to you about the person who supposedly had ownership in Uranium One that had sold it even before the deal went through. But none of that matters because that's not what we're talking about. Evan, can you please answer the question that I gave to, to Mike before? <laughs> I love <laughs> well, that we, one. We're, we're so far past that, Don. I'm sorry. But I, I want to talk to you. Wanna... The president saying that he's the only one that matters. Do you want to hear that from your president? Yeah. Well, okay. Let, let me just say, first of all, that that tape that you just played is Donald Trump confessing of his authoritarian tendencies. That bit in his mouth, that is put there by the system. He didn't welcome that into his mouth. That was put by there by the system. That's not him restraining himself, respecting our system. That's the system checking him, and that's a good thing. So with regard to that, no, it isn't all about Donald Trump. We have a system. There are many leaders in our system. He's the most important, uh, but there are many leaders, many sources of power. They all have their authorities according to the Constitution. It's not all about him. I believe that he does want to keep elements of other elements of the executive branch, like the State Department, weak so that he has more power within the executive branch. I, I do think that's, that's a, a purpose of his. Uh, but it's, it's all wrong. We have our power divided across the government. We need experts. We need people to carry out policy, to execute uh, activities in our interests. And it can't all be done by the president and his loyal family members. All right. That's all we have time for. Thank you all. I appreciate it. All the Mueller and Thank you all. I appreciate it. The Mueller <laughs> Evan McMullen, who ran the president, uh, ran for president last year as an independent, also seen in political commentators Van Jones and Mike Shields, and seen in national security and legal analyst Susan Hennessy. Good evening. Welcome to the program, everyone. Van, you first. Good evening. Uh, you just heard Evan. Uh, Mueller's probe has now gone into the president's inner circle at the White House beyond just campaign matters. How significant is that? Look, I think it's very significant, and we're going to talk about a lot of stuff tonight, but I, I want to just point out. Um, you know, it is very difficult for a White House to function when, you know, people who work there are going home and their spouses are asking them, are we going to have to go into our savings account to hire lawyers just because of what's going on? This is, I mean, I love to listen to the Trump people. Oh, this is so normal. This is almost unprecedented level of, of, uh, of dysfunction of chaos and now possible criminality at the very inner circle. When, you, when you've got Jared Kushner, the, 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 the president's son-in-law having to turn over documents in a criminal investigation. Uh, this has gone beyond a reality TV show. It's a horror show. Hmm. Uh, Mike, here's President Trump in February. Can you say whether you are aware that anyone who advised your campaign had contacts with Russia during the course of the election? Well, I told you, General Flynn obviously was dealing, so that's one person, but he was dealing as he should have been. During the election? No, no nobody that I know of. Nobody so you're not aware of any context look, during look, the course look. of the election? How many times do I have to answer this question? Can you just say Russia yes no is a it? ruse. Hmm. So tonight, J.D. Gordon, a Trump campaign advisor who was in the March 2016 meeting where George Papadopoulos mentioned setting up a potential Trump-Putin meeting, says the president heard him out. How damaging, if at all, do you think this is to Trump? Well, look, I, I, I've said from the beginning on this, the reason why the president gets frustrated by this is because this campaign is unlike any, and, and a little bit to what Van was just saying, uh, this campaign, this administration is unlike any that you've ever seen. I think you contrast the campaigns. You had a very well-run Clinton campaign that had a hierarchy, that had staffers. You knew what their jobs were, and they knew how to do sophisticated things like pay a law firm to go and get a dossier so it doesn't show up on your FEC report. That's something that professional operatives would do. The Trump campaign was a conglomerate of people coming in and out, volunteers. There wasn't a real structure around this campaign. And the only person that was really in charge, the chief communicator, the chief strategist, was the president. And I think he gets frustrated like this because he's sort of saying, I didn't collude with Russia, so there, and I was the campaign. I was the entire campaign. So the re maybe some staffer somewhere did it, and it's a load of bull, but I had nothing to do with it. And so I think so far what we've seen is there are some people that 
may have made mistakes. They're the foreign policy guys, and they've done some things they shouldn't have done. But I think that's a far cry from a big conspiracy to collude with Russia. The, the Trump campaign could barely collude with itself. Uh, because of the way it was operated and because there's only one person that won the election that was in charge and that was President Trump. So they were too incompetent to collude uh, th even though they were trying. I mean, if you're trying to rob a bank and you don't, don't you still go to jail for I it? don't think they were trying. I think the <laughs> Russians were trying to collude with them. I don't think that they were, I, I don't know that, but it looks like Russians tango. were trying to get involved. I don't think they were trying to do anything. I think you had some low-level people that wanted to grandstand, people that most of us who work in campaign politics have never heard of before. And so they were trying to puff themselves up and get involved is what it looks like to me. Well, then why? About the if they did something, well, then the if they did something where illegal, Don, let me be clear. get dirt on, on Look, and on that's, look if they did something illegal and it's found out, we're going to have an investigation. Don. Don't get me wrong. But even incompetence can mm -hmm. cause you to do something illegal and get you thrown in jail, okay. right? right? So I'm not, I, I'm not I just saying that's this okay. Is, Good, Dan. Hey, Don, uh, listen. Uh, first of all, you, you know, these are not low-level people involved. You've got the vice president's son. You've got high people. But also, much more importantly, you have the candidate himself, Donald Trump, saying things out of his mouth that are verbatim uh, a Russian propaganda talking points over and over again. You have the candidate and now the president himself who has talked bad about everybody on earth. I think this guy has insulted every form of, of, of life on the planet except Vladimir Putin. So you know, the idea that oh, there's some but weird people doing some weird stuff doesn't make any sense. So Van, Van and Mike, there, there are two other been. people on the panel. Uh, one of them Sorry. is Evan. Evan, what do you say to this? Yeah, well, let's just make clear that incompetence or, or competence is, is not a requirement for collusion or attempted collusion. In fact, I would argue that if you're an American presidential candidate and you're entertaining, potentially colluding with a foreign power, especially a foreign power that's actively trying to undermine our democracy, you are incompetent, that's for sure. Uh, you, you are also disloyal and, and a slew of other things. Uh, but just because you're incompetent doesn't mean you didn't try to collude, doesn't mean you, you didn't collude. In fact, the President of the United States encouraged openly, overtly, the Russians to interfere with our election. Some say that was a joke, but that has meaning in these things. And, and I think he was, encouraging, he was encouraging the Russians to take the action they did. Look, every week we find out something new about how, the, how this campaign was connected at multiple levels to, to Moscow, to the Kremlin. This is not a nothing burger. This is, very, this is very, very serious. Trump set the tone at the very least. Maybe he did more, but he at least set the tone. His campaign was riddled with people with Russian connections. That's not normal. It doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. if, you're, if you're Jeff Sessions and you're sitting in meetings and these ideas are being raised and somebody else is coming to you saying, hey, I'm going to take a trip to Russia, you, your alarm bells ought to go off. I mean, okay. any U.S. senator should have that experience and should go either to the candidate first, perhaps, and say this has got to stop, and eventually, if not, to the FBI and say there's a serious problem here. But this Susan, is not normal I at all. I appreciate your patience, so I'm, I'm going to bring you in. I want to ask you this question. There's new scrutiny tonight over Russia connections related to Jared Kushner, Jeff Sessions, Sam Clovis, Carter Page. Who do you think is in legal jeopardy here? Right, so uh, any and all of them potentially, and what we're really seeing here is, is something that plays out in lots of different kinds of investigations, which is it's not the crime, it's the cover-up. Um, so what really is going to put these people in the most immediate legal jeopardy is as they start making representations to federal investigators, FBI agents, or to Congress, uh, that, you know, those are sworn statements. Those are statements that are made under oath, and there are legal penalties. So whenever we look at, for example, the, the Papadopoulos sort of surprise plea agreement, you know, what he pled guilty to, what ultimately caught him, uh, or what he got caught up in was making those false statements. And so I think those are the most likely charges, and, and that's really the thing to sort of to look for right now. Um, there's certainly sort of smoke around any and all of them, uh, but we don't have any sort of substantive information yet to say, okay, you know, th there's, there's evidence that they're guilty of this crime or that crime. But to, to Van's point, uh, Susan, I mean, if you're all these people who are being interviewed and you've got to go home, Seriously, your spouse, and you're wondering yourself, can we afford this? How much longer is this going to go on? And do I have any exposure here? And on and on. Van makes a very good point. What do you say to that, Susan? 
No, I think it's unbelievably demoralizing, and this is not the first administration that has faced this issue. So um, White House staffers, their legal fees aren't covered uh, by the government. You know, this was something that uh, a lot of staffers in the Clinton administration wound up with hundreds of thousands of dollars of legal fees. I mean, we're, we're seeing that the Trump administration is sort of hemorrhaging talent, right? Uh, not only are they not able to maintain uh, sort of the, the staff that they do have, but they really are having a difficult time, uh, you know, drawing new people in. We're seeing, uh, you know, lots and lots of vacant positions. As you know, sort of the chaos continues and continues to envelop the, the administration, and they really do need uh, you know effective communication.